Hey everyone, it's Tuesday the 24th of October and it's 8.45 in the morning. I think this is the earliest I've ever started a video. <laughs> Told you I'd get up early now, I've actually been awake since 6 o'clock. Anyway, today's video, the main topic is this new purchase here. It is actually sitting out front right now. Bought it Sunday. Um, got some die cast to show you. There's a mix of some new Majorette and some stuff that I got from the diecast guy on Saturday afternoon. And then there's a couple of other things that I just wanted to give you an update on as well. Um, just some things I've been doing over at Mum's and some things I've been doing here. So, shall we start with this thing? <laughs> um, what I'm going to do, I'm going to insert a picture first before we start uh, talking about this because it'll be easier for you to uh, actually see what it is so here's the picture right have you had a good look at it and seen the weirdness <laughs> um, it is a 2020 leeway delivery now, leeway do seem to have their own website selling scooters and whatnot um, but apparently in the UK you could only buy that from a place called I think it's cheapscooters.com or something like that Cheap Scooters UK something like that I'll have to check the uh, video I watched anyway I bought this Sunday um, and I know what people are going to ask what did I pay for it I paid 575 for it um, it's a three year old bike so it's not quite due for its first MOT yet although it is close I think it's December I should be able to work it out from the date it was first registered but I'll need the uh, I'll either need to run the plate on the DVLA or get the uh, full V5 in because obviously I've just got the new keeper slip here that's all I've got <laughs> um, but yeah, it did say in the advert, December was the MOT. Um, and so far it's got one little fault with it. Um, that'll mean an MOT failure, but we'll come back to that. So, it's a 50cc. I know I've always said I wanted a 125, but I just couldn't resist this thing. Um, 50cc, four stroke. Restricted to 35 miles an hour. I mean, I could just de-restrict it as best I could to get a bit more out of it. Um, uh, I was trying to think of the other specs. Um, it's got a USB charging socket on it. It's got hazard lights. Um, which is probably one of my favourite features because... It really irks me that my jog doesn't have them. Yes, I've still got the Yamaha jog, by the way. I've got no intentions to sell that one. Um, it's obviously got the big pizza box on the back there. It's got a big pouch on the front there. Came with that windscreen thing, which I have since taken off. Actually, and there is a good reason for that. I wanted to leave it on there, but ideally I'd need to get a new one. Um, might be able to revive that, but... Uh, I'm going to sell that to um, Kat. I guess she's going to use it on one of her scooters. Anyway, I'm sure I'm forgetting something. It also came with two brand new spark plugs in the tiny little compartment under the seat and a bottle of oil, as it is four stroke. Um, that was left over from the last oil change it had. It's done 2,885 miles, although I've put about another 16 miles on that since I've owned it because I did ride it to mum's um, yeah I think that is it spec wise um, don't know the horsepower because apparently the Chinese are not very good at giving out such information <laughs> So I did watch a video on YouTube where um, a British guy was reviewing one of these. It was a two-year-old video, so 
I don't know when these bikes were first released. Um, in fairness, though, I know I've always said I've, I've always sworn off from owning a Chinese bike, and here I am owning a Chinese bike. <laughs> uh, but in fairness, the plastic panels and everything on it feel exactly the same type of quality plastic as on my Yamaha Jog. I don't feel any difference with the quality plastic. The overall build quality seems good enough. I'm not going to say it's as good as a Japanese bike because I'll, I'll never say anything is as good as a Japanese bike. I love my Japanese bikes <laughs> but it's good enough. Um, as for the ride, it rode beautifully which really surprised me. It was very comfortable much more comfortable than the jog, but I think that's got two rear shocks, not one. Um, which probably helps. <laughs> yeah, it's got front disc, rear drum, just like the Yamaha jog. It's exactly the same setup. I don't know if that's a cable operated front disc though. I haven't actually looked at the brake lever to see if it's got a reservoir on it or a cable. Um, yeah, that rode lovely all the way to Mums and Bag. Obviously not very fast at 35 miles an hour, but I'm actually quite happy with that on this one at least. I don't need two super duper fast bikes, do I? You know, the jog will go faster than that, obviously, because I upgraded it to a 70cc. Um, Yeah, there's a little bit of plastic damage on the other side, on the right side, where it's been caught, but other than that, cosmetically it even looks better than mine. And one thing about that that really did surprise me is that the epoxy headlight on this is actually ten times better than the one on my jog. I'm not kidding. I could see, because I rode back from Mum's on Sunday night so it's pitch black, I could see with the high beam a lot better than I could with the one on the jog. I was I was actually really pleasantly surprised at how good the lights are on that, actually. I think because it's Chinese, we all think, eh, it's just a pile of poo, you know. But I, having bought this, my first impressions, you know, given that it is three years old now, and it's not actually that bad. The tyres have still got enough tread on them. I, Pretty certain that will pass. There's no play in the headset bearings, so the steering bearings are all fine. There's no play in the wheels or anything like that. Um, I don't think the swing arm or anything is all loose. So I don't think the bushings or anything need replacing. So I'm pretty certain it will go through its first MOT. Except for, now this did work when I first bought it, although it was a bit temperamental. Um, the, brake light switch on the rear brake lever um, it doesn't work now it did because when I went to look at it when I started it up I pulled down on the rear brake lever and started it although that was it didn't at first that was like a bit dead but then it suddenly kicked in so I know it's the switch that's um, got on that side um, and of course the rear the brake light doesn't work with that switch either I mean it's not too much of a big deal at the minute. I've just got to remember that when I brake, even though when I'm dawdling along, I primarily brake on the rear brake. I've just got to remember to hold that front one in enough to activate the brake light. That's all. Just so the brake light is on. Uh, um, I have looked into buying a switch. A peanut, basically, you know. I suppose it's one advantage with owning a generic Chinese bike like that. They all use off-the-shelf parts. You know, that's why Haynes has basically, you know, done this. Because they're all the same, regardless of brand. You know. So, I'm guessing, you know, these Chinese companies literally...
just take off the shelf parts basically for the most part now when I actually called it a leeway because I did post this on a couple of Facebook groups and I'm on one called small bikes great fun and I can't remember what the other one is um, and someone thought I actually meant keyway but no it is actually leeway on the logbook so and the thing is whenever I type in leeway it automatically wants to come up with keyway stuff so oh bay ocean no bay ocean Boshan, Bation. i have no idea how you pronounce that my youngest brother that was going to be his first moped you know before he was old enough to drive <laughs> so i'm going back like 15 close to 20 years actually that's quite scary uh, no, it would be about 15 years ago now. And, you know, Chinese bikes were still quite young. Well, at least I'd never really heard of them at that point. I don't know how long they've actually been around, but yeah, they were crap, those Bayesians. He bought two. Two cheapest chips Bayesians. You know, thinking we could get a good one running out of the two because you know, bought us non runners. We gave up in the end. We spent a good few weeks in replacing every part of the ignition system and everything else to get it to run. We couldn't get it to run, so we gave up. He sold them as spares or repairs to another guy who also had a patient and he wanted that didn't run. <laughs> he was hoping he was going to get um, a good running one out of the three. No idea if he ever succeeded. I mean, they were nice looking bikes, but they really did feel cheap. In fact, back then, they felt a hell of a lot cheaper than what this one does. This one actually feels at least half decent. And apparently that top box on the back has got a good payload on it. Apparently it's about 250 kilos you can put in there. I'm not sure I would want that much weight on the back of that thing, though. <laughs> but yeah, that's, that, is, that was one of the selling points, actually that big storage box um, and like I said you've got the little bit under the seat and that pouch in the front I don't know if I'll ever use the pouch I think I'd be too paranoid that something's going to bounce out of it especially on these country roads if I could perhaps fit like a little hook either side of it so I could strap a couple of bungees across it just to make sure nothing bounces out of it then I'd probably use it Yeah, other than that, I actually had two comments on two different groups as well. Um, they both basically said it looks like a toilet. <laughs> and I sat there looking at this photo and I was like, yeah, I can actually see why you'd say that because that box does make it look like a big toilet system doesn't it <laughs> the Haynes manual is the first thing to invest in do they even actually make those now oh this is re revised 2014 so this is actually newer than that but I suppose handy it's a Haynes, so even if it's not exactly the same as that one out there, I think the, uh, you know, generally there's not going to be a lot of difference. I would have thought. <laughs> yeah, but uh, as I was saying, the storage capacity on it was, I think, the main selling point for me. Yeah, anyway, as I also said earlier, I took the windscreen thing off. Um, I don't know how well it shows in the picture, but you can see it's quite faded. It's like, um, you know how headlights are yellow? Modern plastic headlights, they're yellow as they get weathered. That's what that has started to do. Um, so I could probably, it just probably needs a bit of polishing up because it's not that bad. If I polished it, it would bring it up. But I actually prefer riding it without it. So, it doesn't change my top speed though. <laughs> uh, 
um, I took it off before I rode it back home um, on Sunday um, simply because it was obstructing my vision because it you know it started to fade when this bright sun hit it I could practically see FA in front of me and that was quite scary <laughs> And there was a couple of times that on the um, back country road that I used to go to Mum's. Um, I used that because I'm not used to riding this one yet. And that's a nice quiet road. I don't want to ride something that I'm not used to down a busy main road. But yeah, there was a couple of times there were some pedestrians walking along there and I only just saw them in time. So that was quite a, um, a very sketchy, quite scary ride to Mum's actually. Perfectly fine on the way back because I took the damn thing off. But yeah, um, a friend of mine, cat, she wants it, so I'm going to sell it to her because I've kept it. There is also a few cracks in it. It's not affected the structural of it. It's still structurally safe, but there's just a couple of cracks in it as well. Um, I might buy a new one because I doubt something like that is going to be that expensive. And it's, it'll probably fit various different scooters. So basically, I now own two mopeds, and I can legally ride both. I am tax insured on both. They both have, well, that one's not due for its first MOT yet, and that one's due on the 10th of November, the day after my birthday. <laughs> um, so I've got to book that in soon. I can't see any reason why the jog won't pass. Um, I didn't, when we had all the engine apart, we had all that thing apart to rebuild the engine. I didn't see anything that, you know, said it needed replacing. You know, the bushings for the engine mount were all fine. There's no play in that. Um, wheels are fine. Wheel bearings are fine. Tyres should be fine. They were put on brand new almost a year ago. Yeah, so... But then again, I'm not an MOT tester, so there could be something I've missed, and they'll pick up on, we'll just see when it goes in. But yeah, just because of how cheap they are to run, I'm just going to keep both. I've actually got more petrol in that one, because I also came with half a tank of petrol. I need to, um, if the weather gets better, because it's currently pissing it down, if it gets better today, I'll take them both across to the garage, not at the same time, obviously. Um, and get them both, uh, both tanks filled. The jog more than that one. But apparently, oh, I forgot that spec. Apparently they will do about 120 to the gallon. 120 miles, that is, not 120 miles per hour. <laughs> Actually, to be honest, I wouldn't want to do 120 miles per hour on one of these things. I have to say though, this one feels like it handles better to me. You know, when I have to swerve to avoid like a tree branch or something in the road, this feels more responsive. Again, this is a Chinese bike. Then again, it's only three years old. You know, my jog's a lot older, that's a 2011. So. But there's nothing worn out on it that would affect its handling. Maybe it's just a whole um, dynamics of it because they are totally different um, designs aren't they? But yeah, I'm, I am at the moment, I've only ridden it twice but at the moment I am happy with that purchase. And that brake light switch is a piss easy fix on it anyway. Uh, so I'm not worried about that. Uh, actually, Cat did ask me if I was going to repaint it. But I actually quite like the red and white colours. And I quite like that chequered pattern as well, so I want to leave it. But what I am going to do, because I've got such a big storage box on there, and I am subscribed to a number of uh, good YouTubers, you know, that have merch like stickers. 
I'm going to go and buy some and stick them on the top box. Um, and actually, there was a Facebook group started very recently by a, a local guy here in town for bikers, trikers, and small bikers like that. And he was looking to get some stickers made for the group, so I'll put one of them on there as well. I'm going to have a look on eBay and just see if I can get a new screen for it. Just to, just to add to the ridiculousness of it. <laughs> I think that is actually like the third or fourth reason I bought it. I lost count now. It's just because it is different. It's not the normal, you know, scooter that everybody wants to ride around on. You know, the sporty looking ones. Which I actually quite like, you know, I quite like my job for that. Although I really should give it a bath and I want to use some back to black or something on the plastics just to try and bring the black up in it because it's looking grey. Just so it doesn't look as old and... Yeah. <laughs> uh, that rain is actually getting heavier, unfortunately. And I'm not filling them up with petrol in the piddling down with the rain. While we're on that subject, I do not trust the weather forecast on Greatest Hits Radio. But at 6.30 this morning, you know, at the, when they give out the news headlines, they gave out the weather forecast as well. And they said, dry start with rain later in the day. Literally, this rain started 15 minutes after they gave that forecast. You know, the Greatest Hits Radio, they are one of those um, stations that give the news and the weather um, in locals. So like for our area, it would be like, I suppose, Norfolk and Suffolk, North Suffolk. Um, and if you were listening to it like down in London, they would give you the news and weather down in that area. Unless there's a big main headline as well, they'd give you that, of course. I've just been sitting here listening to some clanging and stuff. Trying to figure out what it was outside, I have just figured it out. It's the um, brewery truck delivering to the pub. They must have changed the day because it used to be a Friday morning. That might have been what threw me off. It used to be a Friday morning. Oh my god, I've got to do all that in this. You know, it's really coming down out there. Right. I don't think there's much more I can say about that. I do need to get another moped cover though because I don't want to leave it uncovered. Especially this time of year. Or any time of year, actually, come to that because it just if, it, if we have another year like this one, it's going to be extremely wet. <laughs> um, I'm just digressing more on the subject of rain. It's been in the news a number of times over the past sort of few years that um, Norfolk could be facing a drought by 2030, I think they said. A serious drought. Oh, excuse me. And every time I heard that, I was like, how? It's always wet. <laughs> you know, Norfolk is full of water. Um, but I have found out why. It's because the reservoirs we have around here are not big enough to cope with the, de the um, demand. Which then makes me question... Why do they keep adding houses? You know, why do they keep building houses if the reservoirs are struggling to cope? <laughs> Surely they should put a pause on that while they upgrade the reservoirs, you know, either big um, big builder ones, build bigger ones is what I was trying to say, or, you know, add on to existing reservoirs so they can cope. It just seems daft to me that they keep straining 
an already strained system by adding houses. And of course, you add houses, that means the sewage works are going to have to work more and eventually they're not going to be able to cope. And as we already know, with the threat of rolling blackouts, that the electrical grid is also struggling, so why keep adding to struggling utilities? Don't, I don't get it. Anywho, next subject, some die-cast models. I'm just going to adjust you a bit. I'm going to start with the brand new Majorettes because they are just sat on the top here, so I can't resist. <clears throat> I'm so glad Sainsbury's actually have these. I know they're £3 per car, which is a little on the expensive side. I think back in the day, when I was younger, these were like... £1.50 to £2 a car. Even back then, these were um, more than a matchbox car. But uh, yeah, so we've got a Volvo. I can't remember what Volvo exactly, but a nice grey Volvo. This is why I like uh, Majorette as well, because they concentrate mostly on your everyday vehicle. I may throw in a few other snazzy ones like this um, T1 truck, Volkswagen T1 split screen truck with some luggage on the roof. <clears throat> uh, I've also got a variation on the T1 Volkswagen bus. I've got a blue and white one with the surfboard and this one's got the uh, kayak on the roof. I like the green. I actually like this one better. What's it got written on the side? Adventurer. Something adventure. I can't quite read it on that orange background. It's white on an orange background. And just to keep the Volkswagen theme for the moment, I've got the pink beetle. The surfboard on the roof. I don't think those rims suit it, really. I don't like those rims on this one. I mean, if I really wanted to, I could drill the rivets on the bottom and put some different wheels on it, but I don't like doing that. <clears throat> right, next. Variation on the Ford Mustang. I've got the blue and white version. I think they're the same Ford Mustang, anyway. I've got that one because, A, it's a Mustang and I love Mustangs, and, B, I actually quite like that colour. I actually think that's a nice colour with a nice set of rims on it. I think they're the same, that's on this T1 here. Yeah, they are. <clears throat> uh, I think we've just got two more Majorettes. We have got a Bentley. In a nice sort of metallic pink. And a variation on the Mark 1 Golf. So I've got that light blue one. And I've got this yellow one. Sometimes I will ignore a variation if I don't like that colour, unless it's a Mustang. That's not the Mustang, is it? Dipstick must have been. Um, I do like the Mustang, so I pretty much will buy every variation of a Mustang that I see. Um, even if they just did one in this colour with different coloured stripes, I'd still buy it. <laughs> so nuts I am for Mustangs. <clears throat> Anywho this box here now he messaged me at first you know saying you know show me a picture of the box die casting at 15 quid I thought yep I can see a few in there that I want um, which I have sorted out there's a, about five in this box that I put in the selling pile but the first lot I'm going to show you were um, bought separate from the box so the first one there's another one of these Bedford Transporters, but this one's rarer than a lot of the others I've got. Because it's got the grey wheels for one, and it's got the um, car, collect car collection coat in red on the side. And this is actually in very good original condition, actually. A little bit of wear on the uh, cab bit, but the trailer itself is in very good condition. Yeah, that's uh, why I bought that one. So I have got several, 
but believe it or not, not one with grey wheels and red riding. Next up, a couple of lovely little dinkies here. This one's got a little bit bent over the years though, unfortunately. We've got the Mark 1 Ford Cortina. He actually did sell me this one quite cheap because he drilled the rivets, as you can see, to try and straighten it up, but he was worried that was actually going to cause more damage, so he just glued it back together. And then we've got Chevy El Camino. Which is actually quite nice, I like it. Dinky Toys, Meccano Limited. And then we've got a classic combine harvester in red. I've currently got two green ones. One's in the for sale pile because I don't need two green ones. I wasn't going to get this one, but I thought, you know what, I've got the green one. I might as well have the red one to go with it. <laughs> so I bought the red one. I do need to find a pin or something just to put on that there because it's come out that side. It's got lost. And the last one I bought separately was the Mercedes Ambulance. Now, I've already got, I think, two of these with that style wheel on. But my other two are nowhere near the condition of this one. This one is actually mint compared to the other two. That's why I got the ambulance. And even the guys said, you know, this isn't everyone's cup of tea. So these don't sell as easy as like a lot of the other castings. But I like emergency vehicles. So for me, these are right up my street. I suppose I could say these are my cup of tea. Yes, yeah, it's got all the stickers on it. The blue dome on the roof. It's got a little scuff to it, but uh, nowhere near as bad as the other ones. Yeah, I'm quite happy with that. Oh, sorry, there was one more that I bought separately, and that was that one. Orgy Jaguar control car with the sign on the roof and all the stickers. I have got another one of these, but my one's missing all the stickers and the sign on the roof. So and it's got um, much more paint wear to it, unfortunately. So that one's way better. This, and that's why I bought another one. Sometimes that's one of the main reasons I will buy duplicates if it's better than the one I've already got. <coughs> then I'll swap them over. And the other reason is I might just really like that casting and can't resist to buy yet another one. <laughs> I have got a handful of Matchbox castings that I really do like and can't resist. Anyway, I'll show you that. I'll do a video on them one day. So I've got two of these which I'm going to put in the um, junk box because, well, with the back wheels. <laughs> oh, I think the rain's just eased off. Yeah, so I kept those just to put them in the junkyard. Uh, not a very interesting Volvo and it's lost its body, but I'm sure I can find something to put on it and, or make something custom. Uh, apart from three corgis I can see in this box, four corgis, they're all matchbox and this one major it. I've got another one of these, but this is in better condition, so I'll keep this one. I have no idea what this is about, because it's quite a weird looking thing with an ambulance written on it. I don't even think my other one's got the stickers. <clears throat> I didn't even know it was meant to have stickers. I'm guessing this was just a, like a cheaper toy that Majorette made for younger kids. That's the, sort of, that's the impression I get from it, anyway. Uh, I have got some of these Corgi taxis. I've got the Matchbox versions as well. This one is by far the better Corgi one I've got. Which, in fairness, looks exactly like the Matchbox ones, but I suppose it would, you know. It's a London taxi. A London black cab. Uh, oh, I forgot. There was actually a few more corgis in that. One more corgi than I said. 
Let's just grab those all out. That one's had a custom paint job. It's meant to be a very light pinky purpley colour. I don't know if the light's going to show it up. I actually thought this was a colour variation because the blue paint job is actually pretty good. But then I saw a couple of clues. Um, there's some blue paint on the pink base and there's some areas where the blue paint is warm and you can see the original paint underneath it. <laughs> Which is a shame it's got worn out like that because it was actually a very good paint job. Oh, I have just seen a bit of a splash on the window there. But I can see that was painted without drilling the rivet, so that is actually a very good job. And I've only got that paint dot on that window. And that side, I don't know if it's going to show up in this light. So, yeah, I'll, I'll give them 9 out of 10 for that, whoever did that. And we've got the Volvo tractor. Now that I think about it, I'm not sure if I've actually got this one. And uh, this is the Corgi Juniors version, but they did do one when they had the name Husky. But um, that's quite rare, and that demands quite a, money, quite a lot of money on eBay, apparently. I haven't looked, but... Um, I thought, they're both exactly the same, they're both in just the same condition. I say exactly the same, the only difference is the exhaust. I had a black exhaust on the Husky. Anyway, I actually thought this was Matchbox at first, because they did one. Lotus Europa from Corgi. Not in the best of conditions, but not one I have. And I don't have this one either, the um, CJ6 Jeep. Quite well detailed, actually. You've got a shovel in a toolbox beside the driver's seat. Tow hitch, so I don't know if that actually came with something or... And it's got the windscreen. Get a lot of toys like this, regardless of the manufacturer, these always break off. Because they're quite... I suppose it's easily done. I mean, it is just a bit of plastic that sticks up like that. All it's going to take is, you know, a kid to stand on it in the bedroom, or mum or dad to stand on it. And that's the windscreen snapped off. I think that's why so many cars, I've got several Matchbox cars, several Mercedes Matchbox cars, actually. I've only... Um, I've got one of this particular Mercedes in yellow that has the screen. And then I think I've got at least one more in yellow that doesn't, but has good paintwork. And three or four white ones of the same car. All of them minus the screen. I'd love to find a white one with the screen. <clears throat> right. Anyway, I've got an old Ford Anglia. This one could do with restoration. I think that's well worth a restoration. It's got bent axles. How you bend the axles on something like this is beyond me. I think, I'm not sure, but I think that's got the metal wheels on it as well. Maybe. No, they're plastic. If it had metal ones, that would have been an earlier model. Um, someone has actually painted this blue. They look exactly the same shade of blue to me, so it's probably done by the same person. I don't know if it's going to show up very well on camera, but to the naked eye, that does actually look... It does look like the same shade of blue, actually. Um, and again, it was a very good paint job at one point. It's just all flaked off. only one rivet on that so it wouldn't be hard to take it apart. I just haven't got the gear to do the axles with so I'd have to take those axles off and make some new ones up or steal them from a scrap one. Maybe I've got a scrap car in the box that I could steal them from. Anywho, I've got another stretcher fetcher to add to the fleet of them. I've lost count on how many of these I've got now. And we've got, is that an El Camino? I can't remember. Once upon a time, I could actually read the writing on these, but then again, when I was younger, these bases were a lot easier to read because they weren't as tarnished. 
That's my excuse anyway. Not the fact that I'm nearly 40 and my eyes aren't as good as they used to be. <laughs> you can see Superbike on that sticker perfectly fine, even down here. Yeah, I think it's not going to be the right way. Should have two plastic bikes on it, but the truck itself is in pretty good condition. I believe I have got another one of these. I can't remember the condition of it. It could be roughly the same or it could be worse. Next. Back in the day, Matchbox released um, what they called the GT series, which apparently were cheaper, you know, than the normal Matchbox. Because basically, they don't have any interior or detail like that. And they were just made a bit cheaper, and I think they used to sell them for like 50p. Um, there's a couple here. I, I don't know if I've got that one. It's in good condition, apart from a bit of paint wear on the gold in the room. This one I have got. I believe this one is actually in better condition than my other one. I quite like these GTs actually. This one, again, I'm not sure if I've got. I think I've got it in a different colour. But that is pretty much mint. So I'm going to keep that one as well. And this one I'm going to keep. I'm going to take a look at my other one. I might keep the other one so I've got a pair of them. And I've just realised the back actually pushes up a little bit too far. Another Escort RS2000 GT. This one's in better condition than the other one. I thought the other one I had was in good condition. This one is close to mint. It's near mint. Yeah, I think the suspension plate for the wheels, because there's like a plastic plate that goes across the inside of the chassis. One end sits over the axle, so it just acts as a spring. I think that's a bit sprung. <laughs> Still a nice displayable model though. But I know these will sell on eBay. Easy peasy. I mean, the last lot of die cast I put on eBay, I actually had a pair. I had one of these, which was quite rough. Well, it was a lot rougher than this one. And a white one, which also wasn't mint. So I had a GT and a standard white RS2000. £5.50 is what they went for from a 99 pence start bid. Because collectors really like the escorts. Um, it's just one of those iconic British cars, I think. It's like a Mini. Even the diecast guy says, you know, he could take Minis to the car boot, they will sell. <laughs> um, because they're a Mini. Same Ford Capris. Because, you know, the, the iconic British cars, and it also takes, like, you know, guys my age or older, it takes us back to our trial, childhood, not childhood. Um, so that got that nostalgic feel to them. <clears throat> Probably the same sort of feeling, you know, that modern kids are going to get when they get to our age and they look back at the cars that were around when they were young even though to me and probably a lot of other people they're just modern crap at the minute <laughs> you know and at some point there's going to be a generation that's going to think differently I think cool oh, I remember when them cars were around you know they were the mutts nuts when I was younger <laughs> Literally, between generations, very little change. It's just the time and, well, the material objects change, basically, doesn't it? Pretty much all that changes. Right, I've got a free tub with these as well. Right. I'll show you this as well. Uh, 
Maybe forgot about it. I just looked down and saw another one on the floor. But I uh, bought this one last week from um, a friend of mine on Facebook who's also a lamp collector. He did say something about a crack in the base or the body somewhere and I haven't found it. But yeah, new lamp to the collection. I've got another one on its way. I'm waiting for it, but I think the weather may be slowing that down because we had Storm Babette. I was posted just before Storm Babette hit, so it might even be floating around in a flood somewhere for all I know. <laughs> um, yeah. But the one I've just bought, it looks like a Dorman Traffy light, which I've got loads of, but it's the Sunflash version, which means it's the strobe. And again, it said something about a crack somewhere, which is why I got it quite cheap. Um, but the cracks don't bother me. If it's not going to affect the lamp, and I still put a battery in it and make it work, then I don't care about cracks. <clears throat> and if it's actually the lens, I could replace that because I have got spare traffic light lenses in the cupboard. Right. A few updates. I'm trying to get comfortable and just put the camera back where it normally is. There we go. So, about a quarter of an hour because I like to keep my videos no longer than an hour, either an hour or less, anyway. So I've been busy over at Mum's the last week or so because my stepdad decided that he doesn't want the model railway up in the loft anymore, he wants it in his workshop. <laughs> so he cleared out a lot of his woodworking tools, I helped him, you know, I listed them up on the, not eBay, Facebook Marketplace for him. Um, and we sold most of them off. You just barely ever use them now, so. Uh, he's kept the table saw, oh, excuse me, and the chop saw. And a lot of the other hand tools have pretty much gone into my workshop, so I've got some sorting out to do in there. Because um, the bench doesn't exist at the minute, it's just got stuff all over it. Uh, yeah, so he did that, he's ripped out all the bench work he put in when it was a workshop. Um, and then he went and bought a load of polystyrene insulation from B&Q's as well as plasterboard and he ended up being a couple of sheets short. So he had to whiz up to B&Q and get them. I then accidentally got the wrong ones, but we made them work, so that's not a big issue. Same thickness, but they had like a beveled edge, which meant to avoid that you had to put them on upside down, but it's all being painted and filled and everything, so it doesn't matter. They were just a little bit smaller as well than the other boards, as in length and width. Um, he already had a couple of rolls of fiberglass insulation, I we're going to hate that stuff. And he's done the ceiling and that. Then put like a plastic sheet all over that before he put the plaster boards up. So all the electrics had to be literally pulled back and pulled out along with the fuse box, which I changed. Not because the fuse box was no good, but just because the old one just looked crap. And I thought if he's going to have a model railway room, he's going to want something... Well, it'd be nice just to have something at the corner that looked better, so I changed it for the exact same style as the one I've got in here, which I actually rescued from the skips when they were refurbishing the um, council office building just across the way there. Because they're actually good looking, usable fuse boxes. I have, though, got to try and find a couple of 6 amp breakers for them, because uh, my one got accidentally broke because a wire got ripped out of it the other day. We actually had to dismantle part of my workshop to get a fridge freezer in because mum bought a big old American double fridge freezer thing um, which meant the fuse box was popped off the wall and I just pulled on one of the wires and pulled one of the contacts out of the um, breaker. So now it literally does not hold a wire in place. That's the one for my lights. So I'm the only spare one I had was a 16 amp, so I chucked that on for now just so we had lights. Um, and the same thing happened for the one in my stepdad's workshop. 
the one that I put in, I went to use the um, 6 amp breaker for that one, I had exactly the same thing. Part of the contact was missing and it just wouldn't hold the screw. So I need two 6 amp breakers. See what eBay has to offer. And I can't just put in any other brand one in there either because it's quite a specific Crabtree fuse box. Unfortunately, so I'm hoping I can actually find the breakers I need. So, eBay. <laughs> um, so, yeah, naturally, I did all the electrics. He's got down lighters in the ceiling. Um, the only problem is with those ones, because he's got two in the bathroom. Um, at their place. The two in the bathroom seem to spread the light all over the place. They're quite decent lights in that respect, but the ones he bought for the uh, railway room, they give a more concentrated beam. Which is good enough for the purpose, but mm, I'd have preferred something else. You know, I preferred a flood of light like what I've got with these spotlights and whatnot. Because again, you know, I've got replaceable GU10 bulbs in these light fittings, and you can get, you know, two different types, two different type beams. You get the ones that sort of spread it and the ones that concentrate it. I suppose it just depends what effect you want to go for in that room. The other disadvantage is with the ones he bought, you can't change the bulbs, they're just one unit. So if one fails, you've got to change the whole thing. Which isn't actually a bad thing. Uh, they're made by LAP. I've heard a lot of electricians call it lap crap. But these lights seemed okay and they seem relatively easy just to switch out if one does fail and they're cheap. He bought a box of 10 for 30 quid. So I can actually see why a lot of people, you know, are having these down lighters fitted in their houses now. It seems to be quite a um, popular fad at the minute. And I've been in some homes where Every room has got these uh, down lighters in. I don't like. I like down lighters, but not quite that much. Personally, for me, if I was going to use down lighters, it'd be in somewhere like a long hallway, so I get a nice even spread of light all the way along it, with perhaps a dimmer switch in. So I'd want dimmable ones. So for like nighttime use, I could just turn them all the way down to dim, and then you've just got a nice dimly lit hallway if you need to use the bathroom or something. <clears throat> yeah, um, I've not actually done anything with bicycles over uh, months for months. Those are preoccupied with other things. I've got three doors in the workshop which are probably getting bloody wet because the roof leaks like a sieve on that workshop. I've noticed some of the sheets, and it was probably in storm a bit, they've actually slid down a bit. So I did say to my stepdad, maybe we should order some more sheets and uh, redo it. Um, if we're going to do that, I might see if we can actually raise one end a bit more so the water runs off a bit better. But uh, I think I will just grin and bear it until next year at least. We're getting too close to, you know, dare I say it, Christmas. <laughs> uh, yeah. And where the roof leak is not where, you know, there's nothing there that's going to really hurt anyway. Anything of valuable or that could get damaged by the rain is on the other side. And thankfully where the gap is now, where the um, sheets of, the roofing sheets have slid, it's not going to leak water in either, so maybe, depending on the rain direction, you'll a couple of raindrops, but I'm not too worried about that. It's mostly just down the side where I've got all the bicycles, that's where it leaked the most, so. Not important, but it is bloody annoying. <clears throat> um, yeah, speaking of flat, that's the last update. Uh, oh, and uh, I forgot to show you the um, motorbike gear that came with that 
scooter. I'll show you that after this final update. So, like I said, I've got three doors for the flat. Only three, because that's all I need. <laughs> um, actually, my brother was doing some work in a home, because he's basically a self-employed decorator. And it's for a single mother and her autistic child. Um, it's a council home, and the doors had been, she bought new doors to put up, and just wanted to get, you know, just wanted rid of the old doors. So, they got bought home to mums, and I've got three of them. <laughs> <clears throat> um, I do need to go at B&Q at some point with my stepdad, because I do need two door jams for this lounge door. Because they got ripped off years ago. I think it was mum's ex at the time. Well, mum's boyfriend at the time, now an ex, trying to get a sofa in here, and he, instead of uh, trying to get it in here properly, he ripped the door jams off. It was either him or it was my brother, I'm not sure. Now that I think about it, it was one of them. But I've never been on there since, so <laughs> if I'm going to put a door back on there, I'm going to need two door jams. Uh, and on top of that, I'm actually going to build some desks in here or tables or a big table however you want to put it and build a lego city on it i want to just build another lego city so that's what i'm going to do I'm three years without one i've got a creative itch that i need to scratch because <laughs> at the moment because i've got all my storage drawers and things of Lego just here, there and everywhere, I can't really easily create and when I build, I like to build for a purpose, you know, if I was going to build a house it would be for the Lego City, so that's what I want to do and I quite miss having that Lego City actually I didn't think I would miss it that much, I thought, you know, I've scratched that it's I've had a Lego City don't need to worry about it anymore, nope my itch has come back. Which means I've got to make room in here and the bedroom, actually. So I need to get some of the items from here in the bedroom. A uh, close friend of mine is going to have a couple of things, like the coffee table, once I've dug it out from up the corner. <laughs> um, I haven't actually decided on a table layout for this city yet. I don't know if I want to make it so I could put at least one loop of train track around so I could, I could run at least one Lego train and maybe one siding or if I want to do like an L shape so I could just have like an end to end railway line on it and maybe with a siding for storing one um, and then just build the city around that. I haven't decided. I mean, I could build an, an L-shaped one. And then just have removable bridges fitted. One right across here where we are. A bit further back, actually. Level with the uh, display unit here that I've got my die casts on. And then one up that end where the stereo is to go from that um, display unit to the Lego table if I did an L-shaped one. That way, if I wanted to run a train in a loop, I could just put those two bridges in and bobs your uncle. And just take them out when they're out of the way. And that way I would still have lots of floor space here in the lounge. I quite like that idea actually. Yeah, I think I'll go with that idea. But it does mean I'm going to have to find a home for both of these display cabinets and those sofas. If I can't get it to work in the bedroom, then I'll probably end up selling at least one of these chairs. Or seeing if um, my buddy wants one. Uh, so that means as well that the big long bench I built in the bedroom, which has got the TV on, um, and had the retro computers on, till I got rid of those 
some time ago now actually. Um, what I want to do is actually cut that basically in half and get rid of half of it. Clear out the corner where I've got Lego tubs stacked. Shove that as far over as that will go so the TV will then pretty much be at the end of the bed. And then I was actually hoping that both these sofas and both these display cabinets will go along that wall in the bedroom. Because the two chest of drawers at this end will be moved in here and put underneath the Lego tables. Um, it, I don't think that's going to work. I'm not going to have enough room, I don't think. Because the bedroom wall is actually a bit shorter than this lounge wall. There's a bit of an overlap at the door end. You know, the bedroom door doesn't come level with the lounge doors. Reset back a bit. So I think the only way I'm going to do it is to get rid of one of those chairs. Or I'll just say bugger it and get rid of both. I can't take a photo of them at the minute because they're just so chock full of crap. Um, I mean, if I did have guests, I've got a foldable chair, and I've got this one. Yeah, ooh, I'm going over the hour now, aren't I? Never mind. A little bit longer than usual, one hurt. Yeah, so... For the gas this morning. Do you know Dr Pepper does that to me worse than Pepsi? I swear it does. Right, so very quickly I'll show you the uh, motorbike gear that came with that scooter. It's got a lovely pair of gloves, and they do fit. And they actually feel a lot more comfortable than the other pair I've got. And if I didn't have to chuck a pair out Sunday, because it all split down the side of one finger, just a big hole, I would have actually had three pairs by now, um, at this point, but I had to chuck that pair out. Look at that. Perfect fit. They are actually very comfortable. I actually feel like I could get the controls a lot better as well. I do struggle a bit with the other ones because they feel a bit stiff. But these are nice. These feel a lot more insulated than the other pair as well. Um, and it also came with... a nut bucket. Now they do actually advise against using second-hand helmets. However, this one I think we'll just do as a spare. Um, I can't find a date on it, so I don't know how old it is. It's got final QC past written on it. ECER 22-05. 5th 2022 maybe? L600. It's got 1400 plus minus 50 grams or 50 G's. G force. Is that what that could take? I don't know, but this does fit. I'm not going to actually put it on my head because it squashes my ears if I don't do it right. Actually, what the hell? Let's put it on, shall we? Oof. I'm done smacking it straight into my head. When I first did this, I didn't think it was actually going to go on my head, and I, when it did go on, I didn't think I was going to get it off, but... It fits. This ear is a bit folded over, but... Maybe with a bit of wiggling, my ears will go flat. That's what I was trying to do. I did get this one to go back how it's meant to be. But yeah, so if anything I've got a spare lid there. I don't think this visor would fit my one because I could do with a new one. <laughs> it's getting rather uh, beat up. <coughs> and finally, whoops, 
just tip the laptop over now I'm on the tripod like a proper biker jacket with a smartphone pocket on the inside and it looks like this inner bit can be unzipped is that to change the pads in it or something so it has got the shoulder that back pad there and it's got the other shoulder pads in it feels quite weird for me to wear because I've never worn one before but again that does actually fit maybe a bit long in the arms because this sleeve does cover my hand a little bit but that's no big deal really we have actually got uh, a pad in here as well and the sleeve came out on this one as well let's just see if I can pull that into place there it is. I'm not sure if that's meant to fix at the bottom here because this was the only one that actually pulled out when I pulled my arm out. There is a button there. But I can't see anywhere to put said button. Oh, hello. Didn't know that either. zips on the sleeve so you can actually zip it shut. Ah. I don't know if it's waterproof. I've got my high vis coat up there. I need some sort of waterproofness but I try to avoid riding when it's pissing it down. And when I have got to fill up both bikes later, well I don't really need to fill up the uh, leeway but the job does need filling up. It's looking dull out there but I don't know if it's still raining. I can't hear anything, but that doesn't mean anything. Right, well, I think this video's gone on for long enough now, so I'm going to shut the video down here. So, thanks a lot for watching, everyone. I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know your uh, thoughts down in the comments section on what you think about this thing, whether if I was a dumbass for buying it, or <laughs> maybe you've had experiences with um, Chinese-built peds that uh, you'd like to share. Anyway, uh, please remember to uh, hit that like button if you did like the video and hit the dislike button if you didn't. And uh, remember to check out the video description because I have links in there for my other two YouTube channels. Um, the Discord server, I don't know why I've got to stop and think about that. I should know it by now, off by heart. It's just... <laughs> It's just like the brain, the gears just suddenly freeze. Uh, and um, my Twitch channel. So again, thanks a lot for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.